Hi guys, welcome to this video. My name's AFM Justin Richworth. If you're new to this channel, please like and subscribe. If you feel that you would like to donate, um, I'll put a, a link below. And today I want to discuss about who is the greatest chess player of all time. And I'm doing this out of respect to the late Robert James Fisher who I believe it's his birthday today, so I feel this is a topic that comes across very often in the chess circle, whether we're playing a local tournament, whether we're playing an international tournament, whether you're watching a live tournament, this topic comes along very... So, to provide my opinion, <clears throat> there's two ways of discussing who is the greatest chess player of all time. You've got to discuss... What is the criteria of a, a chess great? Is the criteria that he must have the world championship? Or is it him being the number one player in the world? The simple reason why is because you've got to take into account players like Paul Morphy never got to compete in a world championship match. And that's why I... And Bobby Fischer... He became world champion, but he never defended the world championship. So, yes, he was the world champion, but we can't speak of him as a world champion. But we can speak of Paul Morphy, and we can speak of Bobby Fischer as the number one player in the world. That we can speak about. When we speak about world champions, we're speaking about Jose Kapalanka, uh, Alexander Alakain. We're speaking about Anteli Karpov. Gary Kasparov, Magnus Carlsen, Vichy Anant, uh, Vladimir Kremnik, uh, Vasily Smyslov. Those are world champions, and that's why I say we need to, to try and get a definite answer. We need to break the discussion of what is the criteria. If we're speaking about criteria as in the number one player in the world. So let's talk about that. So the number one player in the world, it breaks down to two elements. So if you can see, the branches become wider in this discussion. So if we're speaking about the gap between him and the rest of his competitors, if we're speaking about that, then... Bobby Fischer will be first for the simple reason is he was head and shoulders above the next best by far. But then you speak about Gary Kasparov, he, the gap between him and number one and number two was maybe not as big rating wise, but he was number one for 20 years. And in, in his sport, you can imagine 20 years of being number one. That's a long time at the top of the mountain. And 15 of those 20 years, he was world champion. And he, and he played against the next generation. And he succeeded beating and competing against every single new generation. So for those that do not know, if you're a beginner, if you're a parent watching this, um, easy way to what I mean by that is in chess, the younger you are, the better you are, because the new generation pass has more knowledge than what we had that the previous generation had. Because simply, you got access to information through your computers, your database, on your cell phones, you got an engine, so you you can easily get information that a lot of players do not know. So you got to take that to to go. Players today, they stand on what they call, they stand on the shoulders of giants. What I mean by that is, it's easy to say Magnus Carlsen, it's easy to say any modern player, for the simple reason, because they have so much more knowledge than what Paul Morphy ever had. Um, even more knowledge than what Bobby Fischer's ever had. If, and the first world champion, Philip Steins, which you can remember, he never, he hardly had any information on what we knew now. 
so if we put those into account, then you can understand. And back into the debate, Garry Kasparov succeeded playing the next generation. So he played Nigel Short. He beat Nigel Short. He played Fishy Anand, who was uh, the last world champion before Carlson. He beat him in a world championship match. And he competed against Vladimir Kramnik and Shirov. He was unsuccessful with Kramnik, but he was he could have easily taken the result differently if 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 he wasn't so stubborn about the Berlin defense, the famous Berlin. So back to debating who's the greatest. So as we said, so in the form of number one, there, in my opinion, there is only two. Gary Kasparov, because of 20 years of being number one in the world and beating the next generation. And then you got Bobby Fischer, who the rating gap was probably the biggest that we've ever seen. Then another branch of the greatest of all time, who I feel is the unsung hero, meaning by that is we easily forget about the very old generation and i'm speaking like a paul morphy paul morphy used to sacrifice pieces like crazy he was an attacking genius um so you gotta put him into that topic as for the world champions there's a very different vote so now if you talk about the most successful world champions first thing we must note is alexander alakine was world champion and he died as the world champion so there's a lot of questions that we can, that we'll never be able to answer about how good was he as a world champion, really. So we've got to put an argument for him. Then, Anthony Karpov probably had the most successful world championship period because he won the world championship by forfeit. Bobby Fischer forfeit the world championship. And was awarded to Anthony Karpov. Anthony Karpov ended up winning every single tournament that you can think of. And every time he got criticized that Bobby Fischer was better than him, or does he know Bobby Fischer, or that forfeit blew into his face, he went out to play the next tournament and he won it. And he used to, he didn't lose more than two games a year. That is a very good. Imagine playing 100 games a year and you only losing two of them. Many of us in our levels, we struggle, we struggle to even... We struggle to make get our losses less than 10. Imagine doing two and you're playing the strongest in the elite level. With tremendous spotlight. Then I feel you can put Magnus Carlsen into that topic because... Uh, he definitely has got the highest rating of all time. The way he competed with with his com his rivals and his competitors, um, he's got the highest winning streak, which I think it was 125. But if I'm wrong, you can correct me in the comments below. And he also recently he had like I think he had an 89 or 90 uh, match winning streak also. So he had two different streaks at late. And he's the only sportsman or world champion that I know. He's had two peaks. Peaks, if you're new to this, peak means you've gone to the highest level of, of play. Uh, Carlson, he had two peaks, both reaching 2,882 as a rating. So I feel that's very, very impressive. And considering he's also heads and shoulders above his next generation then you had Gary Kasparov Gary Kasparov he, he he beat Karpov at a time when Karpov seemed unbeatable and Gary Kasparov held the world championship for 15 years uh, competing against the new the new and the old and the different um, generations and considering he retired from the sport as number one in the world then you got to, then 
for me, the most exciting world champion is Vasily Smyslov for the simple reason he could play any opening that you wish. And his, and his attitude was, if, if you could play 40 very, very good moves consecutively, you would get your draw. That was his attitude. He, play, he was more focused on winning than drawing. And if you played well, he would give you that accolade. Then, I think the most, one of the most popular world champions of all time, who created the biggest influence, is Fishy Anand, because he created this popularity in India. And suddenly, we're having a lot more Indian grandmasters. We've got a lot more uh, prodigies now. And then we also got to put in an argument of the greatest chess player that's never became a world champion, because there's some generations that never ever. They were fantastic, but they never became world champion. But look out for the next video when we discuss that, because that's the next topic. For now, as I said, in my honest opinion, if you're talking about purely number one in the world, then it will be between Bobby Fischer, Gary Kasparov, and um, Paul Morphy. If you're speaking about world champions... Then Karpov, Kasparov, Carlson, and I would even go as far as Alexander Alakine and Vasily Smyslov. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And again, please click the, the bell icon, icon and keep your eyes peeled for the next video. And I thank you.